Welcome to Maniacal Music Musings. You know, we haven't done one of these in a while, so I thought it was damn near time we started doing them again for this month. And we're back with another one-on-one bracket, and I am glad to do these because they are so much fun getting the people see people stress over what they pick for each of these <laughs> matchups. And, well, let me introduce what was here first before I say which bracket he's doing. Our My guest tonight is... Paul Bright, host of the Why Behind Your Z's podcast. He's a certified sleep coach, and he's an Air Force veteran, which thank you for your service, good sir. You're welcome. You're welcome. I wanted to say that first and foremost, but, and why don't you tell people about your podcast for a minute before I tell them what bracket we're doing? Let's build the suspense. All right. Yeah. So it's kind of the opposite of what's going to happen tonight. It's the Why Behind Your Z's. I am a certified sleep coach, a sleep science coach. And my podcast really is answering people's questions uh, that they have about sleep and giving you some real information, some real practical ways to help your sleep. There's so many tips. There's a lot of information out there that doesn't apply to everyone, but I help educate people that just, they want to get their sleep better. They don't want to fall for myths or, or magic potions or anything like that. You want the truth. I've got the truth about all that. Cause I've been through it. I had a lot of sleep problems while I was in the military and it took a good five or six years before they really started to get better. Once I got out, and I did a lot of work and got most of my sleep issues done and over with and then got certified as a sleep science coach. So I'm passing all my knowledge on to you guys. Sounds interesting. I personally have never had any trouble sleeping, but I mean, <laughs> that's just me. I know plenty of people. I know, I know plenty of people who have. And Oh, yeah. For any of, yeah. You, for any of those, please check out his podcast. Yeah, maybe, you'd be maybe, amazed. Maybe you'll, hear, you'll, maybe, you'll, maybe you'll hear an answer. I mean. Yeah, I, my friends, my friend, one of my fellow podcasters' wife's is, she travels all over the world in the United States, like mm -hmm. talking about all these, de the different like breathing diseases that people yeah. have where they can't, they, and like I didn't know there was that much to it. Even it's like yeah. okay, like this this is a whole new world I didn't know existed. So oh yeah, it, it's amazing. <laughs> it's it, it's amazing. Yeah. But well, and you can find out where to find all his all of Paul's information at the end of this episode, of course, but to For get sure. us started, Paul is going to actually tackle two brackets on this show, but tonight we are focusing on the first one, the one he wanted to do first, because yes. who wouldn't? <laughs> and that is the man, the myth, the legend, the sex god himself, Prince, or the artist formerly known as Prince, or that weird little sign, whatever you want to call him. <laughs> That's yeah. the bracket that Paul's going to take tonight. And yes, I'll, I'll tell you. I'll tell you personally, Paul. I was never, I never got into Prince until we did this bracket originally on my on this show, and Ooh. when we did the original group bracket, I had to listen to the playlist of all these songs I sent you, and <laughs> I became a hardcore Prince fan oh after listening that, to that playlist. Yeah. And so. there's so much more, but that's with any any fandom that you have with some with a classic artist or anything like that. There's always so much more to the story, but you had a pretty good list going on there. That told a lot. That told a whole lot. So. Well, yeah. I do have to say this time that I did not technically make this list completely. This is your ranked <laughs> list from a website, but uh -huh. uh, wh which website? Off the top of my head, I do not freaking know. But mm -hmm. um, it it looked like a pretty good. I actually yeah, yeah. know. So I actually, I said it to my co-host because he's more of a Prince fan, and I'm like, "How's this look?" And he's like, "That's most of the popular. That's most of the songs people know." I'm like, "Okay, good." Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I mean, I I we actually did a Prince bracket on our friend CJ playing the Music Gods Noise Report podcast, and mm -hmm. um. At that point, we kind of 
learned about I learned about a few more Prince songs I've ever heard of, and I have a few more favorites now. But oh yeah, one of these days when I'm driving with nothing else to listen to, I'll have to put on some Prince radio on Spotify and just explore. Yeah, <laughs> wait, wait till you find, wait till you discover the song that he wrote and gave to Kenny Rogers, and Kenny Rogers recorded it. Huh? Yeah, with Elda Bar <laughs> singing background. Ooh. <laughs> I, I, oh, there, there all was kinds of crazy stuff. stories like that. <laughs> there was actually, uh, on one of our episodes, one of the albums I brought, there was a Sinead O'Connor cover, and it actually turned out that Prince wrote that song originally. Yeah, nothing compares to you. Yeah, yeah. okay, yeah, okay. yeah, it is that one. I, yeah. I wasn't sure, I wasn't, I wasn't 100% in my head in that yeah. one. I didn't want to say it if yeah, I wasn't sure. That one. <laughs> Rest in peace, Sinead. So, but you know. oh, 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 yeah, yeah. I totally yeah. forgot that just happened. Yeah. I yeah. felt like one of my personal life last few days, but um, <laughs> yeah, R.I.P. Sinead O'Connor. I, mm -hmm. I mean, I never, I never was your biggest fan, but your, the songs I did know were amazing. So yeah, good stuff. But yeah, but let's start off this fun, All right. fun bracket. Because what are we doing here? <laughs> the first matchup you have to choose between is number fourteen, Raspberry Beret, versus number twenty nine, another another lover, Hole in Your like Head. Oh, Raspberry Beret versus Another Lover Like a Hole in Your Head. Two very, very good songs. Raspberry Beret is the one that most people know that no Prince and they hear it, it's like, Rasp yeah, that's pretty catchy. Had a neat little video. I think the better written song to me was Another Lover Like a Hole in Your Head. And that one isn't one that too many people remember um, unless you listen to that whole Parade album. I really like the way that one is constructed better. Um, but as far as like the overall, can you get people into Prince with Raspberry Beret? Yeah, I would I would pick Raspberry Beret with a slight edge, slight edge. That was yeah, already kind of I mean, tough. <laughs> oh, it, 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 trust me when I say it only gets tougher. But um, <laughs> and yeah, Raspberry Beret is one of those songs that I didn't actually like the first couple times I heard it. It took me mm -hmm. like ten times of hearing it to actually like be like, all right, I'm kind of starting to get the like dance into this thing going yeah. on but yeah it's not like it was one of my favorite songs yeah Those are coming up though yeah but this next matchup is number 13 diamonds and pearls mm -hmm. versus number tw versus number 28 my name is prince Ooh, okay another matchup of songs where people are more familiar with one than the other one my name is prince is a great song diamonds and pearls is a great song too it's very well written it's it's got some catchy vibes to it but i love the energy in my name is prince i love how he did that one because it wasn't just singing he was having a little bit of rap he was coming out of his uh out of his contracts he was trying to get out of them and this is was like the song that was like this is who i really am and he just pushed it out there that's a great song i love that one so i, I would pick my name is prince yeah, I mean, it is a damn good song. <laughs> yeah. uh, I mean, but, and just so you realize it, the next, in round two, my name is Prince, will be facing Raspberry Beret. But, uh -oh. <laughs> yeah, oh, I'm telling you, this is not easy. No, Matt, unless you, unless there's actually a Prince song that you actually don't like at all, this bracket is not going to be easy. So, there's only so one. Of it. There's only one that I really don't like that was kind of popular, and I can't remember if it's in this mix, but we'll find out. If it was popular, I'm pretty sure it was. It is. <laughs> we'll see. Yeah. Because the next one is number 12, the most beautiful girl in the world. Yeah. Versus number 27, get off. Ooh, those are like polar opposites. That's tough. Oh, my gosh. Because the most beautiful girl in the world, it was like his first like real single when he was breaking away from from the warner brothers contracts he recorded all his own there's about 20 remixes of it it's just it's just a pretty song and it's just a great dedication to all the women out there and shining in their own beauty and then you have get off which is the complete opposite it's the very sexualized one the one where people remember prince for having uh the no butt pants on 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 mtv and and Got banned, but gosh knows, much, much worse showed up on MTV much later. Um, hmm. Oh, God, yeah. That's a tough one. I want to say that I would pick the most beautiful girl in the world only because I feel like 
so many people would associate Prince with making the more controversial stuff, but not so much about making this just beautiful song from top to bottom. So I picked the most beautiful girl in the world. Oof. And as you can tell by my name tag on this, that's not, that's not the one I want. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> just that scream in the beginning of Get Off. And then, yeah, man. It's so good. And, oh, it's so and then good. just it's a really the, good the, song. The, yeah. The, funk, the funky, upbeat tempo of that whole song. Yeah. Yeah, it's yeah, that's it was tough, but I, I would just say, those I two. It was like, oh, <laughs> such polar well, opposites, yet both beautiful. This just shows his dynamics and his amazingness to to be able to craft a song and make oh. the make it exactly how you'd want to hear it. So, yeah. Oh God, you could listen to three hours of his music and you're not yeah. gonna hear the same yeah. song twice. Like, yeah, in, in yeah. any way. So it's it's incredible, <laughs> which so, not something you can say for most music acts, but right. Yeah. Well. Okay, maybe the one to do it next week as well. Maybe, but we'll we'll see that about that next week. But <laughs> yeah, uh, this next matchup is kind of the two of the same idea of songs, almost in a way. But okay, it's okay. it's number eleven, Black Sweat, versus oh. number twenty versus number twenty six, Soft and Wet. Oh, okay, gotcha. All right, so Black Sweat, that's that's Ooh. my one. Yeah, that was a little easy for me to get to. Soft and Wet's not a bad song kind of the same but black sweat has so many cool dynamics happening in it and i love it because it's on the 3121 album and th that was a song that i would play for people when they're like so what happened to prince is he still doing the funk stuff and like yeah well he's more doing the jazz and the latin vibe but he still has something funky check this one out and i play them black sweat they're like oh my gosh you know um it's <laughs> that's a really good song <laughs> It, it, I love that. It one. really is. Yeah. It was it my really, ringtone really for a long, long time. I, I had it going. Just people, were, what is that? I'm like, it's black sweat. Yeah. Well, uh, that means in the next round, you're going to have most beautiful girl in the world facing black sweat. But, <laughs> oh. uh, and this uh, this next matchup, I already know which way I would go in a freaking heartbeat, but mm. for you, it might be different. It's number 10, I want to be your lover versus. Number 25, let's pretend we're married. Ooh, another good one. Tina Tina Turner covered Let's Pretend We're Married. Did a good job with that one too. I I, I dig her version of that. Um, that's a good song. That's a really good song. I really like I Wanna Be Your Lover, though. I really like that one a lot. That's one that's just happened to be like one of my favorite ones anyway. Um, just because it's 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 got that nice synth going this was when people weren't doing music like that you know they weren't involving the synths in in in, in the funk that minneapolis funk sound is just it's just really punchy in that one um and him singing that falsetto and the lyrics like when you listen to the lyrics are kind of it's almost like a high school vibe you know it's like oh you got those other guys but this I, it, it's got to be me and then he just kills it in that one so i would pick that oh, one yeah. for sure yeah i, I actually yeah. agree with you on that one 100 percent but <laughs> To see what's going to face around two, this next matchup is kind of a battle of the numbers. Uh oh, it's number nine, 1999 mm. versus number 24, seven. Oh, okay, yeah, hmm, this is tough. This is tough. They're both very, very good songs. I mean, uh, I, I know the way that most people would go who don't really know Prince because it's one of these songs, yeah. one of his most popular songs ever, but yeah. Yeah. We'll see which way you go. <laughs> yeah. I, man, I could go either. Oh, see, I'm a sleep coach and I'm going to have trouble sleeping after tonight, just going through all this. <laughs> this is like hitting me. I've seen Prince live three times. So, you know. Oh, so, you lucky yeah. man. I, yeah. I didn't I get hearing, hearing, yeah, but I got into him. But yeah. <laughs> yeah. I saw him live three times. I've seen Sheila E. I've seen The Time. I've seen just about everybody in the family I wanted to see, except for the Revolution Band now. So my 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 thing with Prince goes a long way. So this is a tough one. Um, Morris Day in the fucking time. Yeah. <laughs> like, oh my uh, goodness. That I was, would love that to was see crazy. Them live. That was oh a crazy God. good show because it was small. It was most of the original band, and um, my seats were like maybe four rows from the front, and it was sort of a smaller setting, so it was really good to to just see everything happening right in front of me. The whole mirror. Every, yeah. Yeah. Oh my gosh. I don't even any, anyway, I would, my edge for 1999 is because he was, he was not afraid to feature other people in the band singing in that one, taking leads in the front. 
and and exploring the whole band so that everyone could hear them not just that they weren't just the players they were like a true band and for him to allow that to happen and and make it work is what gives me the edge with with 1999 i, I love both songs but um i mean i really love the beat of seven um and the message in that one but 1999 i would say gets the edge on this which means i will move on but and I, it's funny it's it's funny because when 1999 was when we, did the, when we did the original bracket i said like until this bracket i always thought 1999 was like a madonna song or like one of those uh, yeah like because his voice is so yeah. feminine sounding in that song that like yeah like i i just pictured like madonna or one of yeah. those 80, 80s like yeah. pop stars yeah you know, like, <laughs> i mean i don't know but it's just it's yeah. the way i heard it but now i can't now i know it's princeton i'll never unhear it but <laughs> yeah yeah he's got three people singing in that one so it's it's great so but i mean i the next matchup mm, i know which way i would go in a freaking second but it's number eight i would die for you mm. versus number 23 dirty mind Ooh, ooh, another yeah it's a good matchup there um hmm. I like them both. There's not too many print songs. Like I said, there's only one that I just, I'm like, it's popular. I can't stand listening to it, but. I almost wonder if it's the one song we're going to agree on about that. I almost <laughs> wonder, but I think we're going to get to it on the other side. We're going to get to it on the other side, <laughs> we'll we're, we're the other side I'm pretty sure. But We'll find out. Um, I would die for you. It's my pick in this mm. one. Yeah, that's my pick in this one. It's, yeah. I, I don't even know really how to explain why. Other than it's got it's got a good repeat that happens that doesn't happen too much in his songs, but it really really works in this one, especially when you hear the live oh. version and, and how it slides into "Baby I'm a Star." When you can catch the two together, it's just it's unstoppable. But even on its own, it's a really it's a really good song. I really like and that one. I, more. If I'm not mistaken, I'm pretty sure that one's in Purple Rain too. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. I think this, this the scene it's in that movie is freaking amazing. So. Oh yeah, yeah. That movie, I love that movie. It's great. <laughs> but yeah. I waited way too long to watch it. When I finally did, I fell in love. But yeah, we are going to do our first play-in matchup of the night. Ooh. And if if you don't know what that is, a play a play-in matchup to ter- whoever wins this will go into round one in, in the final matchup of this half. Okay. And the play-in matchup is number thirty-one mountains hmm. ver- versus, and this one was a participant's choice to put into the bracket. It was from Amanda from the Sipless podcast who decided to put this one in, and I'm not, mm-hmm. I'm so happy she she introduced me to this song because it's my one of my top three favorite Prince songs, and it's Darling Nikki. Oh, <laughs> yeah, that's funny because Mountains is one of my top Prince songs. Um, mm. I I really love that song. Um, it's just such a beautifully made song. Um, Darling Nikki, though, to me is is one of those catalyst songs that just it really changed the landscape of how people viewed music when that came out not so much just because of the song and the movie but because of what ended up happening with the stickers and and all that and the censorship attempts uh, to it and it it just made it uh, even better Um, and people will go back to that song and cite it as like yeah it was darling nikki that really made it made the changes for that and the fact that um, Dave Grohl covered it is really funny too. It's it's actually a pretty good cover. Um, yeah. Mountains is one of those songs that I really really love, um, and I hold that one close to my heart. But if I had to put the two, and you can see my framework really is like what would get people to really want to listen to more Prince at many many levels, you know, and what what was it that changes things? I would give Darling Nikki the the edge on this one. Yeah. Well. That means drawing yeah. Nikki does move into round one, but now you have to choose between drawing Nikki and the song that's already was in was waiting to face it, and that's number fifteen. I can never take the place of your man. Oh man, yeah, that's a good jam. That's a good one too. Um, both again, good songs. I can never take the place of your man. I want to say I almost memorized every lyric the second time I heard it on the radio. It was just it was just so catchy. It was it's a good story in there too. 
Um, again, an opposite of Darling Nikki. <laughs> um, yeah, I would pick I Can Never Take the Place of Your Man just because of that that opening guitar riff. And if you ever hear the long live version, um, if you ever watch um, the Sign of the Times concert movie where he plays it in there, you should catch that one. It's really good. So. Oh, I didn't yeah. know that existed. I may have to try Oh, that. yeah. Oh, it's really good. Well, There's a lot uh, of good stuff happening in that one. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm yeah. sure. I mean, I'm, I'm sure. Yeah. It's freaking Prince. Nothing yeah. amazes me with Prince. Yeah. Like, it, it, yeah. Everything he does is going to be incredible. <laughs> yeah, but, commanding the band in that. Just. Oof. Yeah, I mean, I, it's... I, I mean, I love Darling Nikki, and I mean, you want to talk opening guitar riffs, Darling Nikki mm -hmm. has one of the best ones ever, and yeah. but it's just, it's one of those songs they never will play in the radio because they can't. Yeah, like pretty much. The first the opening, <laughs> the, the opening, the opening line is too, yeah. is too fucking dirty, so. Yeah. <laughs> but, and I mean, maybe that's yeah. something you fall in love with it, but sorry, Amanda, yeah. Darling Nikki goes out in the first round. <laughs> She'll live. All right, well. <laughs> We are now to the other side of round one, and the, this is the top seven Prince songs according to this rank list. So this one's going to be hard because hmm. okay. even the ones they're going against, are, even though they're in the late teens and twenty rankings, are still good songs because it's okay. freaking Prince. So, oof. The first one though, number seven, Little Red Corvette, versus number twenty-two, Cream. Ooh, ah, oh, man, that's painful. That's really painful. Yeah, oh, That's yeah. very painful. Oh, man. So my story with Cream is I saw Prince in the 2005, I believe, Musicology Tour. And that's the one where he was giving away the CDs. If you bought a ticket, you got the whole CD of the album. And it was a great tour. Um, and it was a great show. But the best part of the show was, was when he had his band take a break and he sits on this this bar stool that revolves around he has his acoustic guitar and he's just playing song after song just these medleys and he's playing cream and he stops he goes i wrote the song in the mirror and then goes and starts playing it again <laughs> it's just you could see all his his musicianship and just oh man it was so so good um man and then and there's little red corvette where he hits everything in that song Every piece of what he can do in that song is falsettos, it's high notes, um, telling a great story in there, beautiful guitar solos, little screams, and good chorus right in the middle. So, yeah, I would say Little Red Corvette gets the edge in this one. See, that's 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 another song um, that needed to grow on me. I it took, yeah. me, it took me a while, it took me a while to really like that song. I I tend to like his ones that are not mainstream, but uh -huh. that's just but yeah. oh, okay, well, that. <laughs> that doesn't apply to this next matchup, though. I will say that right now. <laughs> but to see what Little Red Corvette's going to face in round two, it's number six, mm. When Doves Cry, mm. versus number 21, Uptown. Uptown. Yeah, good song. Um, Uptown is a good song. Yeah, that was a nice, funky, earlier print stuff. Um, when Doves Cry has no bass line and it is still very very funky and oh that's just a that just is an iconic song all the way around it's so popular and it's still so very 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 good um there's almost nothing formulaic about it and it still kills like today it still kills today i would i would give the edge to when doves cry on that one yeah I don't blame you. That is actually my number one Prince song. Yeah, it's a good song. Okay. Uh, why? Why do we fight with each other? This is what it sounds like. <laughs> yeah. Cry like yeah. oh, like mm -hmm. it makes you think. So yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but all right. So Little Red Corvette will face when doves cry in round two. Oof. But I know it's just it's gonna <laughs> round two and round two and on, and this one is gonna make you be like, why did I agree to do this for this asshole? But, <laughs> 
<laughs> but the next matchup is number five, Let's Go Crazy, mm. versus number 20, Delirious. Delirious. Oh, that's a good song, too. Let's Go Crazy. Um, hmm. Yeah, that was supposed to be named something else, and it was about a whole other thing than a lot of people think about. Um, but they 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 framed it. Uh, Delirious is a fun, catchy song. I love the little baby cry at the end of that. But yeah. you cannot beat the opening to Let's Go Crazy. It's probably one of the best openings in any song that's ever been on radio. Like, as soon as you hit those chords, you could be, like, two years old and know that because your parents, like, you know, they, they made you listen to it. You hit the, you hear those chords and everybody immediately is like, dearly beloved. You know, it's, oh, man, that song is just amazing. So Let's Go Crazy would be the one for me. It's funny because I don't yeah. think either of my parents – ever listen to prince in front of me I, <laughs> in I, front I mean, of you <laughs> maybe but i i, I mean yeah. i don't yeah i keep i keep mean to ask my mom about that because i'm like i don't know if she ever actually was a prince fan really yeah i don't yeah. know i don't know i mean back in the, that time era they were all they were going to see kansas and all those type of bands so yeah, good bands yeah good progressive oh yeah prog oh, rock. Oh, oh, they were into the prog rock <laughs> uh at that point it was just pop at that point it was just <laughs> pop rock yeah. they were all just popular rock bands but I mean, sticks, Kansas, Chicago. Yes, but... yeah, all that stuff. That's yeah, good music. It is. It's it's amazing, yeah. and actually, we will probably be hitting all three of those bands on brackets on this show eventually. But we, <laughs> between, between me and my co-host, we switch off every month what artists oh. we choose for brackets, and <laughs> like my co-host just picked for this month uh, Iggy Pop and the Stooges. But oh, okay, <laughs> but I, I mean, we just did last month. Uh, it was my choice, and I did Hobson because. I had to do Hobson. <laughs> I, I've been trying to do, I was trying to do like a rap theme for the summer and for my choices at least. And hop, I did, I did Cuban Hobson for the okay. two months I had. Okay. So <laughs> I, had, I had to pay respect to the legend and the upcoming legend. So, okay. all right, but let's see what let's go crazy is going to face. And it's either four sign of the times mm. versus number 19 controversy. Mm hmm. Mm. Both very awesome songs. Um, Sign of the Times. Nice nice uh, consciousness going on in there when it came out. Um, beautiful, beautiful, simple opening and then catches you in with his, oh yeah, once he gets you into it. And then that nice space. Do -do 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 -do. And uh, Controversy, though, also another song that, that was consciousness about what was going on. And, yep. uh, you know, within himself and then with other people. And it was kind of like bringing attention to, you know, not everything has to be uniform. Not everything is straight this, you know, or that. Just let things, you know, be. It's controversy. It's not really needed. Um, and that's got a nice funk to it. So I, li I like them both. Um, I would give the edge to controversy in this one, though. I would give the edge Ooh. to that one. Yeah, it's a well, tough. that's a tough one, too. That's another I'm kind of happy. Yeah. I'm kind of happy you did that though, because it it broke the it broke the streak you were going on of putting all the top ten ones into the next round. Like you actually put the lesser ranked one. In the, oh, oh, really? So <laughs> I like I love when that happens because I yeah, that's crazy, and I hadn't ranked any of these. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I mean, yeah. yeah. Well, I I I gotta copy the website that freaking I did get this off of for my other book. Yeah. But, yeah. So this next matchup, please don't hate me for it, but it's number three. <laughs> Purple Rain, mm. which I'm actually I'm curious to see if that's the song we we're talking about. But versus number eighteen, Pop Life. Okay, um, let's see. Purple Rain. Uh, <laughs> I have a lot of good personal connection with that one. Um, so that's not song. the song you're. That's not. Oh the song no, you're no, about. no! I love oh. Purple Rain. It's a great song. It's it's a, um, it's a great honestly, song. I'm honestly yeah. not that big a fan of it. I'm just not really. I, I See, feel like, I feel like people like when it came out thought it was so controversial and amazing, and that's why it yeah. became so big. But like, yeah. if you listen to it now, it's just literally him saying "Purple Rain" over and over again. Like it's just yeah. like, what are you doing, right. dude? Come on, sing some other <laughs> lyrics. Uh, I mean, that, that's, that's my funny. opinion. Yeah, I hear that's you. my opinion. I hear you. <laughs> yeah, it was it was my go to back in the day. I used to 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 sing in contests, and that was my go to. Um, if I was getting into the later rounds and it, it did well, it did well for me. So, um, so I have a connection with that. I don't sing it as much now. Um, 
Pop Life is a great song too. Um, but I would give Purple Rain the edge just because if you ever listen to the full eight minute in something second version of it it's just the guitar and the and the screams at the end that he does are just they're great 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 stuff they've been ripped off many many times by other artists too uh in the future and it's like yeah it sounds a little bit like purple rain there with that with that screaming or that guitar riff so yeah i would i would give that one all right well the next matchup is going to be number two kiss Mm. versus number 17 baltimore baltimore is a nice song um it, it was you know another consciousness one uh uh i would say kiss though kiss is just iconic another one that transcends time just about everybody can hear it and if you've never heard it before and you listen to it you're like okay you can't not like that song it's just great it's just too many good things about that song um even though now like some of the lyrics would be a little outdated, you don't have to watch dynasty. I would, I would change that to like, you don't have to watch the Kardashians or something like that. And it would still make sense. Um, yeah, it's a great song. I would pick kiss for sure. All right. Well, I'm going to give you a second. I'm going to give you the next matchup and I'm going to give you a second. to think about it. Cause I got to go check something out my front yard really fast. Oh, sure. But it's number one. If I was your girlfriend, Mm. Versus number 16, you got the look. And mm. I'm going to let you think about that for a second while I'll be right back. <laughs> okay. Sorry. We just got to <laughs> no go problem. check something real fast. Which way do you want to go with that? Oh. If I, it was, if I was your girlfriend versus you got the look. All right. So you got the look is the popular song that I hate. <laughs> cannot oh. stand that song. I really cannot stand that song when I hear it on the radio. I immediately turn it. Not a fan of that one at all. Um, if it's, I was your girlfriend is a great song. Though. It's definitely yeah. You, <laughs> you you got the look because actually it's definitely not in my top ten. That's for sure. No. And, I mean <laughs> it's 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 one of those yeah. ones that actually like after I hear it a couple times I'll skip over it like rather than this. Yeah, that's what I proved to my my son. I was like, you know, you can be a great great fan of somebody and still not like some things that they do because that's just art, you know. And I do not like exactly. that song at all. Well, if I was your girlfriend, I like that song a lot. Um, and that was one of those that was great to hear in high school because people were like, what, what is, oh, what is he talking about? But I knew what he was getting at. And, and I took a lot of lessons from that that helped me on later on in life. So, um, yeah. Yep. So, um, that brings us to our second playing of the night and it's going to be, these were two, um, submitted ones too, by people in the bracket. Okay. And. The first one was my co-host's mm. choice, The Beautiful Ones, mm. versus DeAndre Robinson from Masturbator's choice, <laughs> P- Pussy Control. Oh, <laughs> great songs. Uh, man. Yeah, they, they are. Yeah, yeah. Uh, man, I would say The Beautiful Ones. Um, the Beautiful Ones is a decent song until the end. And then once he starts getting to the end, then it's in a magnificent song, like just the levels that he takes it to. And just that, that punch of, I want you, I want you. And the screams that go with it and that wonderful guitar. And then the way it just kind of drops at the end after that high scream and just kind of leaves you hanging and you're just left with that percussion and, and then fades out with, with the synth. Oh, it's a, yeah. Beautiful ones for sure. Mm, I see. I, I I love uh, Pussy Control as they. That's a good Spotify. song though. That is a really or good song. Call, <laughs> or is it called on Spotify? P Control. P Control. Yeah, because you can't mm-hmm. say that. But um, good story in that one too. If people listen beyond the title, it's really that's a really good story too. But um, but yeah, beautiful ones. Just it's construction. Yeah. It's just oof. it's. I mean, yeah. Yeah, it's funny though when you when you're telling the story about beautiful ones, I thought you were going. To, I thought you were about to go a completely different direction when you're like, oh, it gets to this point. And I was, I was like, okay, he's about to either. I'm like, is he going to say it sucks at that point? No, <laughs> like, I, I didn't see yeah. which way I was going. I was like, uh, oh, we're waiting. Gotta, but yeah, yeah, it's so intense. Yeah. Well, <laughs> you are on your last matchup in round one. Oh. And it's going to be the beautiful ones hmm. versus number thirty. Do me, baby. Ooh, good songs. 
I would still pick the beautiful ones over that one. Do Me Baby is a All great right. song too. That's a nice slow it down, pull down the beaded curtains, you know, turn the lava <laughs> lamp low. <laughs> Put yeah. it in your mix with the Barry White and and the, you know, and the Teddy Pendergrass and then you end it with that one. It's yeah. You'll be all right that night. Um, but as far oh, as like a right. whole song goes, The Beautiful Ones is a great, great. It's one of my top top ones too. So, yeah. Maybe I'm just too demanding. Maybe I'm just like my father. Too bull. Maybe I'm just like my mother. She's never satisfied. Why do we scream at each other? We are now into round two, and this oh. is when it gets hard because now the rankings didn't make these matchups. You did, so uh, yeah. <laughs> this is me. the point where we all. This is the point where on every, when we always tell ourselves in these shows, I hate myself for this, but <laughs> uh, it's the first matchup you're gonna have to face going back to the other side mm. is number fourteen Raspberry Beret mm. versus number twenty eight. My name is Prince. Mm, okay, yeah. Okay. All right. That one. Okay. All right. Oh, I did this to myself. I did. Yeah. The sleep coach <laughs> is going to have nightmares tonight. Um, whew, I would say my name is Prince. That That's in, I don't even know how to explain why. I mean, they're, again, this is a tough matchup already. It's, my name is Prince has, has the edge, though. It was, it's, yeah. You don't need to have a reason why. There's literally two lines that do it. Yeah. My name is Prince. And, and I, I am funky. funky. Yeah. <laughs> That's the only thing you need to know. Yeah. But that, yeah. that's not bring it up to to see where that's going to face in the quarterfinals. Yeah. Your next matchup that you created is number 12, the most beautiful girl in the world versus 11, Black Sweat. Oh, man. Gosh. Ooh. Ooh, and it's so bad because you talk up all the songs that you pick and then they have to fight each other. And it's like, why we got, why can't we just have a tie? A 20 way tie. Oh, uh, I literally <laughs> some, some of the bracket shows I'm on, I literally have like thrown things at after I hear that. I'm like, God damn it. Why? Um I'm going to give the edge to the most beautiful girl in the world. Ooh. Only because as much as I love Black Sweat, the, the best thing that happened to me with The Most Beautiful Girl of the World was when I heard not other people's remixes, but his own remixes of the same exact lyrics, but done in like multiple styles of arrangements. And it's just great. The Mustang Mix, for anybody that's listening out there, look that one up. The Most Beautiful Girl in the World, Mustang Mix, that's the best one. Um, but that that's what I give that that one to, so... All right. Yeah. Well, that's gonna make yeah. for the, that's gonna make for a good for, first quarterfinal matchup. I'm saying that right now. But uh, mo- moving oof. on, it's painful. Number t- it's number ten. I want to be your lover hmm. versus number nine, 1999. Okay. Mm, All right. I'm still gonna go with 1999 on that. Um, again, mm. none of these are easy. Um, I'm not like I don't obviously don't hate any of the any of the losers in this one. Can't we just all be winners here? I mean, well, but, uh... <laughs> I mean, yeah. well, one mm-hmm. at 1999 is one of the most quoted in rap songs versus ever. And oh. two, as a sleep coach, you should yeah. appreciate. Forgive me, <laughs> forgive me as. Forgive me as I wrote. <laughs> forgive me if I go astray. I was grieving when I wrote this. Yeah, I just looked that up clearly. But so, forgive me. Yeah, it's true. Yeah. <laughs> Sometimes the lines yeah. in my head get mixed, but yeah. it's just like yeah, it's all good. Yeah, but as a sleep coach, you should appreciate yeah. that one. Oh <laughs> yeah, for sure, for sure. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's well, yeah. I would give 1999 the edge on that one. That's another one where you got to listen to it from start to finish, and you're going to catch so many good mm-hmm. things going on in it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Well, this is the last matchup on this side of round two. And it's number eight, I Would Die For You mm. versus number 15, 
I can never take the place of your man. Hmm. Hmm. Ooh, okay. Um. Yeah, that was a long moment of silence there, trying to contemplate which way to die. Um. I I would say I I would die for you in this one, mm. and not not by much not by much yeah. it's so hard it's really hard the the thing that I gives mean, me the edge with i would die for you is is the dance ability to it really honestly oh yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> i mean and i i just i love the lyrics in that song like yeah and it's just i mean the guitar everything in that song is amazing yeah. i mean Every, yeah it's in yeah. My, it's it's in my top five for friends yeah yeah one. it's it's a great <laughs> yeah it's a great one yeah yeah. Oof, man, and plus, I, I I don't know if you've seen it. I don't know. If, I don't know if you've seen it, but when Prince passed away, mm-hmm. Blackish did, did did like an episode decade. Oh, that was so good. Yeah, yeah. I wasn't even slightly aware of like any Prince songs at that point. When I, yeah. I was just a fan of Blackish, and I watched yeah. that episode. And yeah. I actually had to go back and rewatch it after I got into Prince. I'm like, okay, now I have to rewatch this episode. Yeah, that's really good. It. That was a really good episode. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It was it was it was cool how they did it. I really liked it. It was yeah. it was very honorable of him. But <laughs> yeah, well, that's gonna bring us to the other side of round two now, and oh, this is the matchup I was mm-hmm. <laughs> number seven, Little Red Corvette mm. versus number six, When Doves Cry. Oh man! Oh man! Oh ah! Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's so hard. Oh, that's difficult. Oh my gosh. All right. I mean, really, where do you they both man? There's so there's no tie, right? There's no overtime with <laughs> they're no. both like they're both like right, like right there as far as just quality and the changes and the dynamics and, and the story and and mm. I would give the very, very like 0.008 edge to like Little Red Corvette. Oh, yeah, upset in my head, but okay. That's, that, I mean, really, it's your bracket. <laughs> it's that was yeah, that was the toughest one so far. I would say that was the toughest. Mm. It's just, it, 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 I can I can <laughs> guarantee you it's not going to be the toughest one of the whole thing. But okay, the, the finals <laughs> are probably going to make you want to throw shit. But <laughs> number, but the next matchup to see what Lower Corvette will face in the quarterfinals is yeah. number five, Let's Go Crazy versus mm-hmm. number nine, Controversy. Mm, okay, good songs. Uh, that's a good matchup. I, I would give the edge to to let's go crazy on that one. Yeah, I like it. there's I like the it. two I'm things. That, yeah, that, yeah, that one's a good one. It's just the opening and then that mm. that rockabilly guitar solo in the middle, and then the killer like almost metal ending at the end mm. of that one <laughs> with the take me away over top of it. Mm. Yeah, that's yeah. Yeah. Plus, I mean, I, I love the cor- I love the course in that song too. Like, yeah, yeah. I mean, who doesn't have those days where they want to go crazy? Like, oh yeah, for sure. But next matchup is number three, purple purple rain mm-hmm. versus number two, kiss. Hmm. Hmm. Okay. Okay. Um. Honestly, I would give the edge to kiss. I don't hate yeah. that. I don't yeah, hate that at all. I really would. I, I'm not saying any of these are easy. And I, I love know. Purple Rain. It did it did me well. Um <laughs> but I would I would give the edge to Kiss on this one. Um it I think that one instantly changes people. Like you could be the most peaceful, calm, pleasant, how you doing? Yes, ma'am, no, sir. And you hear Kiss, and then all of a sudden you want to spin around in heels and sing at your highest falsetto that you can and just do whatever man that's a great song i think that one just changes people so as soon as they hear it it's like how can you not bounce your head to that in a bar somewhere you know it's, yeah it's great yeah. yeah well that brings us down to the final matchup in round two number one if i was your girlfriend 
mm-hmm. versus the beautiful ones. Mm. 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 I give it to the beautiful ones. Yeah. Still so much going on in that one. Yeah. Yeah, it really is. I mean, yeah. Yeah. That's it. Matches yeah. like that are hard because yeah. it's not, I don't clearly love either of the songs like fully yeah. enough to just be like, oh, it's that one. Like, yeah. it's like I got to yeah. think about this for a damn second. <laughs> yeah. If I Was Your Girlfriend is a great song. If people listen to that one, especially the end where he's where he's talking, you know, and he's got this altered voice he calls Camille um, that was created on mistake. Like he put his voice in the, in a machine and it was speeding too fast. He's like, Oh, I can use that. And he created a whole personality out of it and it appeared in a bunch of songs. Um, but yeah, that one's, that one's a deep one, but the beautiful ones to me is, is the one that, that punches just right. So. Could you be? Well, that means you are now in the quarterfinals, which means there's only eight matchups left in this whole thing. Oof. But <laughs> and it doesn't get any easier, especially at this point. <laughs> but the first matchup you're going to decide here is number 28, My Name is Prince, versus number 12, The Most Beautiful Girl in the World. Hmm. I would give that one to The Most Beautiful Girl in the World. And it's it's only just because I'm the diehard Prince fan that's heard the other mixes along with the original. The original is great, but the other mixes to me are just amazing too. So, um, yeah, both both iconic in their own way. But that I would give mm. that one the edge. The most beautiful girl. Hmm. And yeah. that means to see what that's going to face in the semifinals on this side. Hmm. It's going to be number nine, 1999. Versus number eight, I would die for you. Mm, okay. Mm, okay. Two different. I ones. think it's actually. I think it's actually might be the hardest matchup in the semifinal and the semifinal quarterfinals. Yeah. Ah, yeah. Good stuff. Good stuff. Um, I want to give the edge to 1999 on this one, mm. and and it's to me like these edges in my head. They were going from like, oh, it's maybe if I was going to put it like, you know. 50 50 be like 55 45 or something now it's getting down to like 50.06 over 49 <laughs> point <laughs> like, you know, nine yeah. four or something like that it's getting to be like that close to me so it's, oh, it's... it's really razor thin in some of these that one's that one's a close one yeah well that means that your semifinals on this side are going to be the most beautiful girl in the world versus 1999 Mm. So, yeah. But uh, before we get to there, though, we have the we have the quarterfinals on the other side. And okay. It's, okay, actually, this one might be the hardest <laughs> one. I might I might have lied. This one might be the hardest one. I think. Uh, but it's number seven, Little Red Corvette, uh, versus number five, Let's Go Crazy. Oh, ooh, that that's that's a hard one there. That is definitely a hard one there. Again with the oh ah. Can I throw anything? No, I'll wake people. I can't. Okay. Um, <laughs> that would be bad for me as a sleep coach. Be waking people up in the house that are trying to sleep. <laughs> yeah. What is be your bad. job, man? You know, so. Um, be, be, be bad for me too as a parent. But yes. <laughs> have, yeah. And it's, it, they, they know what's going on down here, though. Um, ah. ah. Little Red Corvette. Yeah, Little, little Red Corvette. Uh, which yeah. means Little Red Corvette will face one of these songs, and it's either number two, Kiss, or The Beautiful oh. Ones. Oh. Now, now it feels like, you know how like when you're 
watch basketball and or if you're watching like the NCAA tournament or even the NBA tournaments, and you're like, man, I wish this team would play against this team. My team would play against this one because they could kill this one. And I hope they don't match up against this one. And that's where I'm at now. It's like, well, do I pick this one? <laughs> All right. Uh, say it again. Just so I can convince myself. Kiss. Kiss versus, versus the beautiful, beautiful ones. ones. Yeah. Uh, the beautiful ones. Mm, I can respect it. <laughs> it's a, hey, it's your, you do this to yourself, and it's not getting easier at this point. I know. No way in hell. I know. <laughs> it's like. But, yeah. Uh, oh. What's it gonna be? If you're ready, it's time for the semifinals. I'm not ready for this, but okay. <laughs> oh. Well, let's uh, actually let you pick a side, left or right. Uh, left. Okay, that's actually kind of what I was hoping you'd say. But it's number twelve, the most beautiful girl in the world, versus number nine, 1999. Hmm. Nineteen ninety nine. Ooh, yeah. I'm pleasantly surprised yeah. picking this far. <laughs> yeah, nineteen ninety nine. I'll give it. Uh, yeah, yeah. Why? Did it's, I... it's better not come back to haunt me. I just, you know. Yeah, I think it's not. But <laughs> we'll have to go for a nice walk after this one. <laughs> but that means the other side of the semifinals is number seven, Little Red Corvette. Versus the beautiful ones. Wow. Um, Little Red Corvette. Little Red Corvette. Yeah. I was going to say, it kind of has to go that way. Yeah. I mean, it's just, it's so hard. I mean, (laughs) it's so hard. Well. Yeah. Oh, it is. It's it, trust me. I know it's not easy. I've I've had to make some <laughs> fucked up decisions on brackets before, and it's like you. It's like okay, I'm not gonna sleep. I'm gonna, I'm gonna sleep great tonight because that's how I am. But I'm not gonna be happy with either of these decisions. But sometimes it's even know. like, what can I do to pick? Which one? Do, which one do I pick to piss everybody else off in this bracket a lot more? Oh <laughs> man. <laughs> just, to, just to get the reactions of like, oh, yeah. the asshole. Oh, like, or the uh, Prince fans are going to be like, how did you pick? You know, but they're all valid, man. They're all valid. Mm. It's just, yeah. Mm. <laughs> well, put it this way. Yeah. When we when we originally did the bracket you're going to do next week, uh-huh. one of my favorite podcasters I work with all the time dropped a bomb about one of his songs and oh, yeah. everybody the reactions were fucking priceless so <laughs> they're, they're on my they're on my facebook as reels too because it's it's That's one of the funny. most watched ones i have because it's just like <laughs> the when he says what he says everybody's jaws just boop <laughs> like <laughs> but before we hit the finals here yeah yeah we're gonna, we're gonna do the third and fourth place matchup just to Oh, that suspense a little more once again just to just and, to bother me right just to add to my oh nightmares. god yeah <laughs> well, these are the two that you didn't pick in the, in the semifinals okay. so for third place is it number 12 the most beautiful girl in the world or mm. the, the beautiful ones kind mm. of ironic these are, these are in the third yeah they're both matchup. pretty songs um oh okay 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 so that's tough um, I would go with the beautiful ones on that. Um, Ooh. yeah, okay. that's tough. Again, the remixes are great on the most beautiful girl in the world, but the beautiful ones, I think I want to say that it's one of the songs off of the Purple Rain album that people 
are appreciating more and more and more. They're starting. They didn't quite appreciate it when it was there originally, but now people are appreciating it more and more and more. Not, and I don't think it's because of Mariah Carey covered it not too long ago, but it's just a great song. I mean, it's the, there's some depth to that one. So, um, it, yeah. Oh no, yeah. I mean, all, yeah. all the songs have depth. To yeah. Some degree, but yeah, that one, that one though. Yeah. yeah. Well. It's time oh, yeah. for the finals. <laughs> and the final matchup is number nine, 1999, which, just to bring you back here, it beat I Want to Be Your Lover, and it beat Seven to get here, mm-hmm. and I Would Die For You, mm. which, oof, I can't say what that would be, I Would Die For You, but that would be. <laughs> and it's facing... It is, but it's mm-hmm. facing yeah. n- number seven, Little Red Corvette, oh. which beat Cream, When Doves Cry, and Let's Go Crazy. Yeah. And yeah. The Beautiful Ones, which yeah. three out of four of those songs, I would not have picked Little Red Corvette over, but okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Let's Go Crazy was a tough matchup, though, man. That was, that was really, that was really tough. All right. So 1999 versus Little Red Corvette. Yep. 1999 with the three different singers to start off the song. Catchy chorus. Going into it, talking about the apocalypse. And then the nice little funk groove going on in it. And then the nice end with, Mommy, why has everybody got a bomb? And just takes you back. <laughs> You know, and then we were youngins back then. But as you get older, it's like, yeah, that was the whole Cold War era. Potentially, we're going to be done by 1999. Yeah. And we should just party. We should really just party. Just have a good time in this life because it's, you never know when it's going to end. And just great. And the little red Corvette that he wrote in like 10 minutes in the back of a limo. And, you know, <laughs> talking mm. about going out with a girl and and slowing it down because he wasn't ready for it. She was too fast for him. And then he's like, but I ain't never seen the body like yours. You know? <laughs> so, and then he goes into his whales and his nice guitar solo. And then the very, very end, this high end. Oh, that's a great song too. Um, man, I, I'm going to give the edge to... Little red Corvette. Give me an to that one. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, oh, that was I, tough. I, I, that the whole me. bracket oh, was tough. Bad. Oh, the whole that, bracket was tough. Uh, that whole thing, yeah. There was there was a there was only maybe two or three matchups. Like, yeah, yeah. I, I'd pick this one over that one because I would do that in real life too. And then there was someone's like, oh, but then that second round, that was just painful. That was just, oh. well, yeah. Just so yeah. the audience at home knows this. In case you admit, admit, forgot already, because we glory, we glory, glorified over these songs for a while. But number, yeah, Paul's final four is at number four, ranked number twelve, the most beautiful girl in the world. His third place was the beautiful ones, a participant choice in this bracket. His second place was number nine, ranked nineteen ninety nine, and his first place was number seven, ranked Little Red Corvette. Mm. So, mm. I mean, that's, that, I mean, it's Prince. So no matter what we yeah. do, it's yeah. going to be four good songs in that final four. Yeah. So, yeah. It's, there was, there it's, was so much it's, going on in there, man. There was so uh, much going on in there. And, yeah. ladies and gentlemen, Paul will be back next week to take on Stevie Wonder, the man, the Woo. myth, the legend himself. That might be harder. Uh, <laughs> Honestly, uh, that might be harder. <laughs> I, I mean, Stevie yeah. has a lot more songs that were radio played constantly. So yeah. to this day, but so I some mean, of his deep cuts, though, man, they just they oh, really, yeah. 
really hit, you know, and this, he covers a lot of ground and he's another one I got to see live. Fortunately. Oh man, oh. that was, that was an iconic show too. <laughs> I'm but, sure. Uh, I mean, yeah, he, oh, you got to see him live, but he couldn't see you. Yes. <laughs> oh, <laughs> he yeah, would say I, that too. I, yeah. <laughs> uh, he, he would. I mean, I, yeah. I, I, I that's yeah. why I don't feel bad making those jokes with him. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So tell the people, Paul, where can they find you, your podcast, and just promote yourself to the fullest name where you like. All right. So my website is sleepyoudeserve.com. Um, if you go there, you can sign up and you can get emails every other week. I will give you sleep tips from that. And you also get a free book that I wrote called How Sleep is Supposed to Work because a lot of times fixing your sleep issues – really goes back to understanding how is sleep supposed to work anyway. And honestly, everybody doesn't know the whole story of sleep. Even the sleep scientists now don't have all the details. But there's just enough in there that's going to make you think about, hmm, maybe I do need to change this and change that, and that can improve your sleep right there just from that book because of all the research and and everything I did with that. Um, My podcast, again, is The Why Behind Your Z's. You can find that on all the major platforms, Spotify, Apple, you name it. Um, and I also have an Instagram that you can follow me on. I, I do some fun reels on that one. And that's basically sleep coach, Paul. So those are three great places to find me. Sleep the why behind your Z's podcast and my Instagram sleep coach, Paul. Not that I'm going to sleep much tonight after this, but you know, it's <laughs> yeah. He, he Paul's Paul's on, when we turn this off, Paul's just going to go, go, go and <laughs> Turn around and be like, all right, I got to start listening to Stevie. I got to I I study the Stevie songs, you know, <laughs> prepare myself for that doom, you know. Uh, well, you yeah. got a whole week to do it, so yeah. no worries. But, <laughs> but yeah, you everybody knows that you could find Maniacal Music Musings and myself as Jeremy Bryant on Facebook, as Uncensored, Unapologetic, and Untamed, you cubed podcast collective, Facebook group, or meta group, whatever now. But you can also <laughs> find me on X and the Gram as that Juggalo Bastard. And you can find me, you can also find me as at Juggalo Bastard on the other new thing that Instagram started that I can never think of the name of anymore. But what the hell is it called? <laughs> but you can also find me on TikTok as at Juggalo Bastard Podcast. And it's called Threads. You can find me on Threads. Threads, as yeah. yeah. I barely use it. I, I barely use it. I don't see a point. It's just Twitter. But it's a Twitter that has less people on it, but yeah. you can also, it's just, it's millionaires being dicks. That's all it is. But <laughs> you can also find us on YouTube as Maniacal Music Musings, or you can find us on YouTube streaming live where this is streaming now on the Blind Knowledge Network, because all knowledge was blind until Prince got off. But <laughs> I want to thank Paul for coming to join me for this. It's oh, been a fun one. And I can't wait to have him do Stevie Wonder Bracket next week. Man. Same, I, I believe same time, same place. If yeah, I'm not we can mistaken. do it. We can do it same time, same place. Works for me. We had, that's what's good with that. So yeah, okay, yeah. same time, same place. Man. This is one week this away. Was, Stevie Wonder. This was fun and torturous all at once. Uh, it's the great thing about the show. <laughs> <'Cause> <laughs> just ask my co-host who's watching right now. <laughs> but uh, ouch. <laughs> oh, we, 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 each other's music choices all the freaking time. It's what we do. <laughs> it's just, it's just the way we do our show. But, uh, <laughs> well, Paul, yeah, we will see you next week. And to all my listeners and watchers, thank you for watching. Thank you for listening. And be sure to like and share and ring that notification bell wherever you're listening or watching. It helps. Trust me. Yeah. Leave a review if you're on Apple. Please, it helps. And if anybody wants to do one of these one-on-one brackets, feel free to contact me at any of the places I mentioned earlier for a full list of what's available because it grows every month. So <laughs> let, me, let, me know, let me know what you want to do and we can make it work. Until next time, folks, have a good night.
Try to tame me 